Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Absinthe in the three-minute pool on ICC. This is a Russian Grandmaster, and let's just quickly check his stats. Maxim Rodstein. I thought that this player uh, was from Israel, but I could be wrong. Okay, this is interesting. So trying to get into, like, a, a Leningrad? Hmm. Okay, I'll just play a main line. We're going to transpose into a Leningrad variation. I'll play Knight H3, like, kind of trying to direct the Knight into F4. I don't really know anything about this variation. Let's go D5. I just don't want him to play e5. But he can bring his knight into c5 now, is the thing. So let's do this. Probably knight c5 will be played. Knight e5 instead. All right, maybe b3. Hmm. Yeah, let's play b3. I'm a little bit worried about my long diagonal, but there's too many knights in the way for his bishop to actually get at it. That knight on c3, so not worried yet. Okay, let's castle. Plays his queen over, and I think b2 is a good square for this piece. I'll be looking to try to play e4. That's what I would like to do. Let's go knight d3. Three minute game, so we can't spend too long thinking about how to arrange our forces. We just got to adopt something and play the position accordingly. I don't think I've ever played this Grandmaster before. Okay, so he's gearing up for a kingside attack. Uh, clearly would like to put a knight in on g4, I think. Now, if I take, he takes. Hmm. Maybe e3 thereafter? Let's try that. The queen trade would be helpful. I don't think he'll play it, but let's just pre-move that in case he does not. Okay, I want to open lines on the queen side. F4 is another possibility. Let's play C5. He might go for it with F4 right away. Does not. Let's go here. Plays E4. Okay. I'll bring this rook over. Maybe D6 is a possibility. I feel like I've done a decent job of shutting down his attack, but am I better? Maybe not. Okay, let's go d6. And if he takes, maybe take with a rook, is what I'm thinking. Wow, he's actually going to play the position with the pawn on d6. All right. Hmm. Let's go queen c4. Just pinning the e-pawn for now. Knight d5, and maybe rook d2 to defend this bishop. If b5, I can take on passant. Although, then my pawns get broken up. Okay, he plays h4. That's a really annoying knight in the center. I'm just going to trade to make it easier on myself. Though I hate to do too many trades. Okay, let's swap here. Let's go f4. Try to fight back in the center. He can no longer take on Passant, but he might start attacking me down the h-file. I can play queen c3 check. He'll play queen f6, though. That should be okay long run, though. Maybe he'll go king f7 instead. He does. Let's bail with the king. Problem is I don't feel very coordinated right now. Better try to trade stuff. If he plays rook h8, I, I can play queen takes h8. So that's cool. Now he's got two connected pawns in the center. Maybe not good for us? That might trump our d6 pawn, which isn't doing a whole lot anyways. 
Now he'll play rook h8 most likely, but... Hmm. Okay, let's trade and bring our king up. Time. He can swap and play the rook over to b8. Let's still try to get the king up. Rook b4. I can play my bishop up here. Mm, okay, I'm going to bring this back. d4, though, he has. Check. Well, we'll do our best with what we have here. Ooh, that's not good. I lost that pawn on c5. Yeah, this is losing. All right, I'm going to resign. Strong game by my opponent. feel like I didn't have any chances um, once I took on d5. His pawns were too strong. He was able to enforce his will. Like, we've got this nice d6 pawn, but it never amounted to anything. Okay, let's take a look at it. This is a crafty move order. I'm not exactly sure what to do against this move order. I mean, maybe knight f3 is, like, more accurate here. I usually play knight c3, but... Um, actually, I saw an Alexei 1 video recently, Fide Master uh, Mark Timmermans. He also commented the same thing. He, saw, he thought that maybe knight f3 is more accurate. <laughs> it's early to say, but... I mean, after f5, like, he's kind of tricked us into a Leningrad where we played knight c3, which is part of the main lines, but it's not what the line that I like to play, personally. So, after castles, like, knight f3 would be the normal move, but knight h3 to f4 is kind of interesting, too. b3. Hmm. Let's start the engine right about here. Because I didn't think much about knight e6, but it might be the best move. Engine says so. Knight e6. Take, take. So I'll try to play knight to d5 on the next move. Like in the event that he goes after this pawn, then knight d5. And he can't take it because of knight takes c7, forking the queen and the rook. But, hmm, d takes e6. He could play c6 to keep the knight out. And I always worry that this pawn will become abandoned. And I won't be able to defend it any further. This should be fine for black. Could be good for black, in fact. Yeah, I don't see much for uh, in the way of compensation for the pawn on e6. So I moved back to d3, and then we traded. I played e3. e4 would have been better. Ah, yes. Okay. Because that way, if he avoids the trade, I can take on f5. Like, say, queen g6, I take on f5, and then he has double isolated e pawns. Yeah, would have been better to inflict that upon him. And even in the event of a trade, take, let's say, rook takes. This should be good. He can play f4 and attempt to push past and keep it closed down, but I'm not going to fall under a mating attack, at least. This position seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, rook fe1, maybe c5 to come. Eventual breakthrough on the queen side. Maybe my bishop can go like bishop f1 to c4. As played e3 is a little bit passive. He avoids the queen trade. Probably he just wants to keep the game more complicated. I put my queen on e2. e4, I think, was a good move by him. That, like, restricts my light square bishop. Also stops me from ever pushing e4. Cuts off a defender of d5. So I played rook a d1. The computer advocates for f3, trying to chop down his center right away. Yeah, that makes sense. This move also, though, seems logical. d6. And he pushed. I mean... Yeah, I think during the game, I probably overestimated my chances a little bit from here. But I really need to break up his center position. And again, this f3 move crops up. It's a very good point. What did I do here? Queen c4, trying to pin his e-pawn. But yeah, he was able to put the knight on d5. Okay, so that's my big regret about the game, that I didn't play f3. On a few moves here, this could have been a strong way of continuing create counterplay. Also open up my bishop too. Maybe I, maybe it strengthens a plan of b4, b5 in the future. I think the position is still plenty sharp and unbalanced, but uh, yeah, clearly this would have been better than the game. Because I really floundered after queen c4, knight d5. Just didn't come up with very much. Rook d2 is a pretty indifferent move, I think. I actually wondered if he could have played b5, trying to knock my queen off balance, because if the queen goes back to e2, I lose a piece. So... I was ready to take this way, but then A takes, and now this pawn 
um, has no defenders. Maybe I could play knight takes d5 as the computer recommends, though, because then knight e7 check would win back the queen in the event that he took here. But he just played h5. I took, he took. The computer thinks I'm better. I doubt that. <laughs> um, queen a4 is a better move. Okay, now it thinks black is a little bit better. This goes back to something I was talking about in a video yesterday, in fact. Um, in positions where one side is attacking the king and the other side's attacking like an area of the board, like here, black is attacking my king with the pawn storm he has going on, whereas I'm attacking like the queen side slash center, the stakes are always going to be higher for the side whose king is getting attacked. So, I mean, if, if I were to have a plan that worked out on the queen side, that would be all well and good. But if his plan crashes through, I'm just getting checkmated, whereas he can maybe recover from a queen side attack. So this is scary now. Yeah, I think I think already like my position is not so good here. I'm surprised the computer thinks I'm better. It really wants to put the queen over like on b4 or a4 or something to try to harass his queen side pawns, but still I think this is only a temporary fix. Yeah. I think the longer I give this to think it, the more it'll start to like black's position. Be queen b4 instead. Bishop takes d2, b2, rook takes b2 f4, queen takes b7, h4. It's scary. It's very scary. So I think I needed to do something earlier, like that f3 move. That would have been a better way of, play better way of playing. So once this happens, <laughs> again, f3, yeah. I played f4 instead, but he did not take it. Check. I gave a check. He played king f7. g4 could have made it really interesting. Possibly not to my benefit, but at least there I'm trying to pry open the f file and get at his king to create counterplay. I played king f2, just kind of ran. Also, the clock was a big problem. He almost had a 3 to 1 time advantage at this point. Yeah, and I think this end game that we get into is practically winning when he has these e and d pawns. Is I am such a long ways from being able to do anything with my d-pawn, whereas like my rook or my king has to constantly monitor the monitor the d4 square, otherwise he's pushing, and once these pawns hit e4, d4, I'm probably just lost. Yeah, he drags me back to the defense of g3, and then he opens up the other side of the board. Principle of two weaknesses style. He's not going to win the game based on g3 alone, so what does he do? He opens up a second front. And then he gets his rook over here. Yeah, and this is, this is too easy for him. With me having no time, plus um, probably just a bad position. Rook h2 would have been decent. Okay, looking for counterplay. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that with 15 seconds left. That's a good point, though. So maybe he played it a little bit sloppy. But now he gets back on track after d4. Check. Yeah. This is certainly losing. And then win c5, and now my d-pawn's toast. Okay, so tricky move order. I gotta remember to play knight f3 against this one. But then again, if knight f3 is played, then black can go d6, knight c3, knight f6, and we're in a king's Indian where white is already committed to knight f3. Again, not a big deal if you play, like, the main line, but now I can't play, like, the same-ish, for instance. So this is always a tricky move order. It's kind of why I play it for black, too. I mean, I know it confounds players from the white side. So I just haven't encountered too many players who go into uh, Leningrad Dutch from this. So, all right, good game, Mr. Rutschstein, and hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.